One person with coronavirus in King County, Washington State has died. This now makes the first coronavirus death confirmed in the U.S. 164,000 coronavirus cases in the U.S. and more than 3,000 have now died, surpassing the number of people killed in the September 11th attacks. We One of the world's most accomplished innovators took to a public stage five years ago, warning about pandemics. It all sounds quite prescient now to hear Bill Gates' advice then. If anything kills over 10 million people in the next few decades, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus rather than a war. We have invested a huge amount in nuclear deterrence, but we've actually invested very little in a system to stop an epidemic. We're not ready for the next epidemic. The country's largest Native American tribe has also declared a public health emergency over the outbreak. Navajo Nation officials say there have not yet been any confirmed cases on the reservation. President Jonathan Nez says this is a proactive measure to ensure that they are prepared. He also imposed travel restrictions for all members of the government's executive branch. The Navajo Nation has reached more than 100 cases of the virus. The Dep its Department of Health says there are 115 positive cases. 19 of those come from the New Mexico area of the Navajo Nation. Today, President Jonathan Nez announced a curfew from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. for the entire Navajo Nation. It's set to go into effect tomorrow. Tonight, a Western governor is warning that tribes could be wiped out by the coronavirus pandemic. Here in Arizona, the Navajo Nation has been hit the hardest. Hey, this is Shine. <laughs> Trying to get everybody to say something here using my phone, but uh, you know, we had some loved ones that passed on in this month. And I'm really sorry, Eugene, Joey. Uh, so many years back, I was in the same situation with you guys when your dad passed on. I was there at Sun Regional with you guys. And now it's me, your mom. But you guys have to hold each other together with your sisters. Because she was here with grandma, but now, no. I don't have anybody now. It's just me here with them. I wasn't expecting this to happen either. I just saw her like two weeks ago. She was always happy and joking around and everything. I was surprised she came by, but I didn't think she would get the virus and just be gone just like that. So this virus is pretty serious and, you know, I'm pretty sad to hear it this morning. I remember when she lived in Pueblo, I remember Eugene and Joey being small in the t shirt <laughs> We used to go over there on weekends because I lived in Cheyenne that time. You guys were little. <laughs> and um, your mom and Joe were very... Uh, very lovable and accepting and caring people that I know and you know they never said anything bad they always had an open arm mm -hmm. and just to hear this this morning it really break, broke my heart and my, my mom she she always wanted to make sure that that we got to know our, our relatives uh, even our distant relatives, she, she always made it a point for us to know who we're related to. And when we uh, visited, it, it wasn't just high and by. It was deep, meaningful uh, conversations. Whether it was her venting or her 
telling you how else you know what 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 else better <laughs> you know how how else she can help you you know it, and that's just who she was and in that spirit you know the the girls definitely are understanding every everything that 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 what she meant and 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 I've been having conversations with the girls and we'll we'll, we'll get through this and thank you to everyone Eugene uh, or Tisha and 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 myself our our dad side of the family they did reach out to us and they definitely have been reaching out to us and checking on us and and just expressing their condolences. So uh, definitely appreciate my um, dad's side, the Hernandez side. It's kind of hard to explain all this to grandma. <laughs> you know, they're, they're so used to the old, old ways and I keep telling her, um, we don't know how this whole thing is gonna go. So that's the, the only thing right now. As you know, Larry lived with my mom in, uh, in, in close proximity. And uh, he did test positive for the virus. Larry was admitted to the hospital on Tuesday. Uh, Larissa Letitia took him to the took him in because his oxygen levels uh, were fluctuating and and they were really low. The hospital told us that his oxygen levels are back to normal and they wanted me to pick him up. And I told them that he's positive and I don't want any I don't want to get infected and I don't want nobody to get infected because my mom was a primary caregiver. And she took care of him, and so it took it took some talking to different people, but uh, we were able to keep Larry in there overnight. So they kept Larry in there overnight. Uh, he was good to be let out, but because uh, my mom was his caregiver, they made an exception to keep him there in med surge. So he's been in med surge, uh, and he's still in med surge. Uh, they've been monitoring him, and uh, me and the girls, Larissa, Letitia, and so me and the girls went to go see Larry uh, 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 later today. Uh, I think it was like around 11. Uh, we were definitely trying to figure out how the best way to tell him because, because he does have a hard time hearing. And the doctors did make a, an exception to have us go to his window, and they brought him to the window, and we called the his phone, and and we told him, uh, uh, and and he um, it was tough. He, I asked him, what is, what does he want us to do? What does he want? Uh, what request does he have? And he told us to bring her home. And so, uh, and he said to bring her back to Shiprock. And he uh, didn't want to talk anymore after that. So he put the phone down. But uh, we, uh, we definitely um, told him, and, and we, we kept telling him that we're here for him and, and, and to stay strong. So I got a phone call about an hour ago from his doctor and they did have to give him more oxygen. He was put on oxygen this morning. So it was the first wow. time they had to get him on oxygen. He told the doctor he's fine. And he's been telling the uh, doctor every day that he's fine. But his his medical readings are showing that he needs oxygen his vitals and so they put him on oxygen this morning and i got a call about an hour ago saying that they're more concerned about him that they have to increase his oxygen 
And they said that he um, has previous um, uh, surgeries where he had a trach, where he's been in intubated already, and they had a conversation with him about the severity about getting intubated again. Oh and they asked God. him, should something happen, what is his re what request? And what he told the doctor is that he doesn't want to get intubated. He doesn't want to go on the machine. And so taking all um, the all of his vitals in a, uh, that that um, that that's the concerns that the doctors have. They told me that they went ahead and put him on redesmer fear, which is a antiviral drug for the COVID nineteen. And red, my mom was put on redesmer uh two days ago so um or is it the day before yeah yeah two days ago my mom was put on redesmavir and um and so northern navajo medical center i guess they're they're starting to do that now because i was asking for any type of therapy i was asking for plasma treatment i was i was asking for everything and I was told at the time that Shiprock doesn't doesn't use any of that stuff. They the only the only uh, other hospitals because it's not proven. So, um, but I'm just glad that they are giving Larry something to fight the virus. And so Larry started uh, receiving red res 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 fear, uh couple of hours ago and we're just hoping that he pulls through but the doctors they're just uh had that conversation with us to be open with us just in case something does happen because because he is a high risk and and he is kind of going in, into that direction and as soon as i hear anything you guys will hear something but um and that's where i sent larissa Letitia was to because I um, printed out pictures for, 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 my, for Larry. So I, I made copies and, and we uh, put them in, in frames. So he, he has something to look at, you know. And, and so they went to go take this to Larry. Uh, so, so we just, you know, that, that's the update with Larry. Um, again, I'd like to say thank you to everybody, everyone, family, on both sides of Joey's family, on his dad's side, and also on his mom's side. Um, again, my name is Shine. Um, that's how everybody knows me. <laughs> and, um, today I, um, First of all, I'd like to tell everybody that this is real. Yes. <laughs> it's real, everybody. Um, I have to say that, and we're not going to hide it. We're going to let everybody know, okay? Oh. My grandma... My grandma, her brother, Jameis, myself, my husband, and my second oldest son, we got tested on Friday. Our results came back today. Um, my heart just broke. My grandma's positive. My grandpa James is positive. My son Kyle is positive. I myself is negative, but I have to get retested in four days because I was going in and out 
my grandma's house. My husband is negative. I have a 13 year old son that just got tested about an hour and a half ago. So his test is gonna be pending. It's really hard. Going to the funeral home this morning and then this afternoon, getting a phone call. I couldn't take it no more. I had to break down and just cry. This is why I'm sitting outside my grandma's carport. The nurse has been calling me. So we have we had to quarantine my son, my grandma, and her brother in one home, in one household. We can't go in. We can't we can't visit them just from the outside. And it's hard. But I talked to my grandma. I told her my son's gonna move in with you. You guys are gonna quarantine. We, the nurse gave him instruction on how to take care of the grandparents. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> I'm a healthcare nurse. I, I have patients out there too that I've been, you know, um, telling them about the COVID-19, educating them. And the nurse was asking me, how are you doing it? You've been exposed to them. How are you negative? I said, I, I have to wear my mask. I disinfect myself every day, change my clothes at the door. You know, I have my youngest one's a two year old, and I have a six year old. So we wanted to make this known to the family. Don't, you know, those are the results from our family here in Tokoe. We got hit. <laughs> it spread like a wildfire. We have some that are recovering. Some of them know that they're positive, but they don't want to get tested. Some are still pending. <clears throat> so that's how we are right now. In the background, my grandma oh. is sitting on there. How far I can go to oh, see them. No. <laughs> as you can tell, as you can see, I'm the sunshine. Everybody knows me by sunshine, so that's me. And oh, this is hard, you know. Um, as of right now, we have 17, 14 positive cases here in Tokoa, in our community. And all day, I've been getting calls from Northern Navajo Medical Center, nurses calling me. And also I got to, I got, <laughs> I don't know how many get lucky to talk to the head CDC doctor <laughs> of Northern Navajo. And I end up talking with him on the way back. And just, I don't know what they're gonna do. Let me just tell you that. I think they're, they're gonna, they might shut this down. They might, they might set up roadblocks right down here, down the road, turn off to 9090. Um, because this is a hot spot. Where I'm told to tell everybody, stay away from Tokoa community especially right here in this area. And um, it's, it's very heartbreaking. It's, it's very emotional. I never thought I would be in the midst of it. We would be in the midst of it. Never did. We just don't listen. That's our problem. We say, Shani, Hueni Hakati. 
Shini, shini, shabitne, huishin tahotitne, you know? We say stuff, we don't, we say, we don't care. I don't care, it's not us. I don't care if I get sick. You know, I I, I don't care is the thing that, that we say a lot of times. But when we actually get it and see it and see somebody that we really, really love, then it's a heartbreaking. Our tears run. On Monday, when my brother Joey told me that his mom had went home with the Lord, and and not even thinking, I said, "I gotta tell Grandma. Hold on, wait up. We gotta tell Grandma." Not knowing anything and just coming in and hugging Grandma and telling her that her baby had had went on because Rita was was 20 days old when my grandma and my grandpa took her in. And so she was like their biological baby. And they raised her up. And, you know, and we were here all day that Sunday, that Monday. My mom came and she was here too. And here uh, yesterday, we were told the news that she my grandma tested positive and then i got another call they wanted to talk to my son and then because he's over 18 so i had to give them the number they call him he came around the corner he says mom i'm positive and then nurse call again and tried telling wanting to talk to james and he was being rebellious and just shutting his phone off on the nurses and I had to fight my way to get the results and he was positive. I didn't know what to do. And finally we got to a conclusion that they told me that they can quarantine together because they're all positive. So that's what we did, talk to my son. Said, you're going to have to take care of Grandma and Chain there. I'll be your runner. I'll get stuff for you guys. And that's how we work this whole thing out. I have a 13-year-old at the trailer. He might be positive. I got a six-year-old that Kyle and live with him and his other brother. And then today, my auntie Virginia called me and she said, she says, I don't know what to do. She was giving me these numbers over the phone and I was calculating and told her that, auntie, you're running a fever. Go in. You need oxygen. Let them help you. So my uncle... Uh, my uncle's wife, Charlotte, she, she took her in and then she called me and she says, they admitted me. How about my grandson? What's going to happen to him? I said, hold on, wait up. I said, let me think, let me, let me, let me figure out something here. Hold on. And she goes, I call my daughter, Verlina, to come down. I said, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. And then phones start ringing in and from the hospital and... I started telling them, I, pretty soon I sounded like a broken record, just telling everybody, you know, this so-and-so is positive, they've lived this far, this much, this way, and that way, and so they told me that we cannot have no visitors, Ashkoda, tell your families, tell your children, Toko is a hot spot right now. I called Verlina. I told her, don't come, sister. If we're going to stop this virus, if we're going to fight it, we're going to overcome it. I said, we can't have visitors here no more. I said, if you take your nephew home, he's a carrier. You're going to infect your in-laws. You're going to infect your children. You don't know who you're going to infect. I said, no. We have to stop this. We have to. We, we, have, we have the power and we have the authority to stop this whole thing. 
but we have to listen with our ears. That's what it's going to take. And Dr. Percy told me that. He says, I don't know how, but he told me, he said, you were tested negative, but you showed symptoms. I started using my albuterol Sunday. Three o'clock this morning, I got sick. I started self-medicating myself. Then I, <clears throat> I have to get retested Friday. I think they told me that you got tested too early. My husband has to test tomorrow. He works at San Juan Regional. And his workers and his boss is really on him because he's one of the main person there at the hospital. They want him back, but not right now. So he's going to get retested tomorrow early. Just, um, well, the meeting was going on. I have a cousin, Randy, which is uh, my grandpa, James's son. He lives in Albuquerque. He just hurry up and came by and um, dropped off some paper towels for um, his dad and those that are quarantined here. He, his boss was very fortunate enough to get us some face uh, mask, disposable um, mask here. And there's 50 in each. And then, wow, this is like gold right here. <laughs> Hand sanitizer. This is something that we, we really need because our shelves are empty. And then it was really, wow, this is the first time I've seen something like this again. And, and then um, he also brought us... Um, I think he said 50 of these um, fabric masks that are reusable. They, 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 they can be washed again. So it, it doesn't go on your ears. It goes all the way behind your head like a headband in the back. So he dropped off these for us and he went back to Albuquerque. Uh, that was really appreciative. And then I have... Um, you know our shelves here in Farmington and it's really hard to get by to get stuff and this is the reason why the virus just spread you know uh, we didn't have face masks we didn't have hand sanitizer we don't have disinfect spray or wipes and stuff so I reached out to my brother um, JR in in Oklahoma and his son the, the oldest one I reached out to him and I asked him that you know if they could get something together, um, cleaning packet together for us, and that um, I was willing to give him, you know, money and stuff, and, and they're, they're, he reached out to his um, friends out there, his co-workers, and his drum groups, and stuff like that, and he says that, man, sis, I can't believe it, they're really coming in, they're buying stuff, they're, they're bringing them by, wow, you know, those are blessing to us, and those are going to be distributed to to the families here in Tokoan that don't have um, running water and electricity. I mean, I, I I was really shocked when when I sat down to actually list families here that didn't have electric and that didn't that didn't have running water around us. So. Um, that that's where we're at we're good with food stuff you know chapter houses what they're giving us is like food and half um uh pinto beans and uh rice and potatoes and canned stuff you know that's something that we don't need but we need these we need we need these most important things and gloves you know that's what we need that that, that that's really something that we really need here in Clorox too is what we need and and um that that's mainly what we need food wise we're okay I tell the boys you have seven goats over there if we go hungry we'll start attacking one of those goats every day <laughs> but you know so that that's that's what's going on right here in Tokoan community um I feel like I'm on CNN <laughs> But yeah, yeah that, that this is what happened to us. And we're just telling everybody, I'm telling everybody, don't come here. Um, we said, this is the hot spot. We don't want any more. This is safe here, you know, being on Zoom. It's safe. It's safe for us. 
yeah so i don't know if anybody has anything any questions joey i don't know um everybody's on mute <laughs> so, thank you Shine. but thank you 